In this video, I'm going to be ranking all of the Aberration exclusive creatures in a tier list. Now that Aberration Ascended is out, I thought I would rank all of the exclusive creatures on there with the new ones, Cosmo and Yiling. And the first one I'm going to have ranked is the Bulb Dog, which I'm going to put at the B tier. This is one of the Light Pet Shoulder Pets, and on Aberration, Light Pets are extremely useful as you need them to see, and you also need them to get rid of some other creatures like Nameless and Reapers, they will basically, or at least Nameless won't come after you if there's light, and Reapers will be weakened, which is extremely important. So you basically need one of these light pets. But there's also multiple different types, and there's a new shoulder pet added that makes it not as important. So I think B is a good spot. And then we have the Basilisk, which I want to put at the C tier. Now I need to mention this. This is a PvE list, or from a PvE perspective. So, uh, not a PvP player at all, so the Basilisk to me isn't that useful as you need to get either like Rock Drake eggs or some other thing like Wyvern eggs to tame it. And once you do get it, once again, it's kind of just more of a PvP creature and in PvE I don't find much use for it. It is a really cool creature, don't get me wrong, I, I like it. And the poison balls that shoots are cool, I just don't really have any specific use for it. Next up is the new DLC creature Cosmo. This one's going to be in the A tier. Of course, you need Bob's Tall Tales to get this one, but once you do have it, uh, it's pretty good so far, and it seems like it's going to be insanely useful in Aberration. Could even be closer to S tier, but it's going to be like top of A, as this thing's pretty great. As you can see from the footage, you can swing around like Spider-Man, and it's kind of like the grappling hook, except for there's no grappling hooks on Aberration. You can't use them on Aberration, but... This is the closest thing you have and it also might be a little bit better you can reel in and you can reel out too it also has the ability to shoot webs which will slow things down as well and you can kind of have these charged webs too so it's really dope and it's got so many abilities nice to have this one i'm not going to go over all the abilities in depth but this is probably the best shoulder pet on aberration you're able to get around super quickly being able to swing around it's pretty awesome Next up is the Glowtail, which I'm going to put at the B tier. Pretty much does the same thing as the Bulb Dog, so it's going to be in the same tier. If I had to pick either the Bulb Dog or the Glowtail, I'd probably pick Bulb Dog, but uh, the tier list, they're just both in the same ranking area because they do the same thing. I do prefer Bulb Dogs, though. These guys are pretty cute, though. They're pretty cool. I like them, too. There's just a lot of uh, light pets on Aberration, so all of them are pretty much going to be around the same spot. And then we have the Shine Horn, which is also going to be in the B tier. This one's probably my favorite light pet as it's adorable looking and it kind of sits on your shoulder it's really cool this one's my favorite out of all the shoulder pets but still going to be in b as they all like i said pretty much do the same thing next up is the ravager which is going to be in the a tier this one is a phenomenal creature for aberration it's kind of an early game tame but it's really great for early game as it has a bleed attack it's really strong you can use it to kill all kinds of stuff on aberration it also has a really high jump and it's pretty quick so you can get around the map it can go on zip lines so you can travel across the map super easily because there's tons of zip lines around a lot of areas so that makes travel with this thing great it also has weight reductions on lots of resources like stone and i believe there's a ton of other stuff it does i don't know it all the top of my head but it's super useful for moving resources as well next up is the lamprey which i'm going to put at the d tier this one you can tame with a fish basket i think and it doesn't really do much it does do one thing though and if it latches onto you it will basically make it to where you won't take radiation damage in the radiation zone. So that's pretty cool, but I mean, it doesn't last forever, and if it runs out, well, you're going to die. So I think a hazard suit is way better, but if you do need to run in the radiation area for something, it's okay. So I think D tier is fine. Uh, the, basically, the radiation ability is basically what takes it out of F tier. Next up is the Karkonos, which I'm going to put at the A tier. This one is a great creature. I mean, first off, it's really strong, but it's kind of hard to tame. You need a catapult with like cannons or something like cannons or catapult, whatever. Once you do get it, it's great. You can jump super high with it, so you can traverse the map really great. It's a great for traversing if you don't have a rock drake or anything before that. But, of course, it can also pick up two things at once. It has two claws, and you can have one creature in each hand. And you can slam them down, so they you can basically kill them without it attacking you back. At least some creatures can't attack you back. You can also throw them super high, so you can move your own creatures up areas that they normally couldn't get to as well, which is just great. They also made them breedable in this update, so I guess it's another plus. After that, we have the Roll Rat, which I'm going to put at the B tier. Maybe it could go a little bit higher, but it has one main use, as it's pretty much the only way to get wood on Aberration, which wood is a super useful resource, but that's pretty much the only thing it does, so I'm just going to keep it at B. 
as the saddle is really expensive to make it has the rollability but i don't know anybody who actually uses that it also like runs out of durability on the saddle too which is kind of annoying but uh the wood it gets is great i think it has a weight reduction on them as well so it's just great for getting wood not really too much to say there next up is the feather light it's the last of these shoulder pets and it's going to be in b tier as well it's probably like my third favorite third or second maybe i can't pick it's pretty cool though it's one of the only ones that can fly too which is cool i think it might be like one of the very few creatures that can actually fly on aberration i think there's like the seekers and glow bugs and stuff but uh, this one you can actually tame so i guess that's kind of a cool bonus but after that, we have the brand new Yi Ling, which is also going to be in the A tier. This one is a great creature so far. You can kind of get it early-ish game. It's still not the easiest thing to tame in the world, but it's easier than a Rock Drake. And it's kind of, I guess, that way before you get a Rock Drake. You can glide around with it, but the glide is not super overpowered or anything, but it does allow you to get from super high areas and then just glide super far away. You can also kind of jump midair and do it, and then it has a little boost. It can also shoot feathers, and it's got all kinds of different feather shooting modes which deal different things, and it's pretty cool. So I definitely like this creature a lot. I think it's worth being an A tier. And next up is the Rock Drake, which is easily going to be an S tier. This one's pretty much essential for Aberration, and once you get it, it's a complete game changer. There's just so much good about it. It's great for utility in the game. I mean, I think its stats are pretty great overall. It's got plenty of weight, stamina, health, all of that stuff that you need. I use this thing for killing pretty much anything I need to, like Reapers and stuff with a light pet. You can kill them, I think, if you have a pretty high level one. It can also travel great. I mean, you can glide around everywhere, and it goes super fast compared to everything on Aberration, at least. And you can kind of dash forward and climb on walls. You can climb on any surface. You can go above it, which you can also use in certain caves, too, which is really great as well. So you can go through them with the Rock Drake. It also can go invisible. Another bonus, and on Aberration, Ascended, at least, I think it's, its visibility is a lot better. Is you can barely even see it on the... Uh, arc ascended compared to ASC so this one's easily S tier and then we have the reaper which is also going to go in the S tier I mean it's maybe not as good in PvE but I still think it's pretty amazing as it's insanely strong you can pretty much kill anything you need to on aberration as this is like the strongest creature on aberration there so you can kill anything it's got like the poison balls you can spit out it's got the tail whip attack and it can also jump super high so you can use it to get around the map really great too it's got one of the best jumps in the game and you can go anywhere you want with it pretty much like i said it's just really strong overall it's also just a amazing looking creature it looks phenomenal it's really cool so that's the one i think deserves s tier but well, that is my tier list of the Aberration exclusive creatures. There's a little bit less than I thought there was. I guess compared to Scorched Earth, there's not as many. But uh, let me know what you guys think of the list and what would you have on yours. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe. Thanks for watching and bye.